showdown between two top 20 teams as they get it together for the 107th time going back to 1893. So glad you could be with us right here on the SEC Network. Dave Neal alongside my Heisman Trophy partner, Andre Ware. So glad you could join us. What a great matchup we have today. Certainly two teams playing very well right now. So many things you could talk about that are identical, including the records. But when it comes to running the football, few teams in the country do it as well as these two clubs do. But they do it differently. Yeah, they do it in a manner of Georgia Tech. It's going to be the triple option attack where they come at you trying to get the edge, work the fullback through the middle of the formation. And then with Georgia, it's just flat out downhill football with Nick Chubb coming right into the teeth of the defense. This Georgia Tech team will certainly use a bunch of guys to carry the football. You know this. Nick Chubb will have it in his hands a bunch today. Sony Michelle close to 100 percent. He'll be a factor in the run game as well. These two clubs have gone at this for a long time, but lately it's been all Georgia. They have won four straight and 12 of the last 13. Yeah, both teams, Dave, can score a lot of points. They're in the top 15 and points scored and rushing yards. Per, per game uh, across the nation. So a lot of runs in this one. Expect a good old fashioned backyard brawl. Georgia Tech wins the toss. They defer. So Georgia will have it first. Isaiah McKenzie takes a knee and to the 25 yard line. The pigskin will go. That'll give us an opportunity to go down the sidelines, check in with the third member of our team. Her name is Laura Rutledge. And good morning, Laura. Good morning, Dave. And Hudson Mason for Georgia has completed 68.4% of his passes this season. He's on pace to set the completion percentage record in a season, single season for Georgia. His offensive coordinator, Mike Bobo, currently holds that record. And Mark Rick said he's impressed with Mason's accuracy, but what he appreciates most about his quarterback is his ability to stay here at Georgia. He really appreciates that he's stuck it out in this day and age of instant gratification, Dave. Well, they split Mason out to the right, and they run a little wildcat with Nick Chubb, and they come near side and pick up six yards on the play. So already some... Uh, trickery if you will from this Georgia offense led by Mike Bobo the offensive coordinator Yeah, talking to Mike Bobo he said there'd be a few new wrinkles today and already the first play of the game Nick Chubb in the Wildcat formation as you mentioned Hudson Mason split out wide and progress already for Georgia in the running game second down and four they'll fake it to the wide side come back near side for Chubb he's got room to midfield he is to the 45 he is tripped up or that could have been a Really substantial gain, 24 yards on that pickup. Watch the left guard here, number 54, Brandon Cublano, get out in front as well as the big center, David Andrews, picking up some blocks down the field. They love the screen game. Hurry up. Nick Chubb has 11 yards, another Georgia first down. Take a look at our impact players on this side of the football. Yeah, John Theus, the left tackle, graded out the highest last week up front. Sony Michelle going to give Nick Chubb a spell in this one. He'll be important. Keyshawn Freeman is a true freshman and a dynamic player. And DJ White is a turnover machine on the in the back end of Georgia Tech secondary. Yeah, this Georgia Tech defense has been stellar the last few weeks, but right now. Georgia is slicing and dicing another gain of 13 Malcolm Mitchell on the reception for the Bulldogs that'll be his 22nd catch of the year yeah they will do this to you where they get in a rhythm offensively and they want to play downhill they want to play fast you wouldn't think Georgia being a running team and a pro style offense would turn the gear up like this in terms of tempo but they are good at it when they're rolling. From near side again, Mitchell, this time he is met at the 21-yard line by Jamal Golden. The safety, that'll be a loss of a yard. Boy, and Golden had a super game a couple of weeks ago against Clemson. 85-yard interception for a touchdown. He leads the team in interceptions with four. Good open field tackler. And he showed it there working against Malcolm Mitchell. Georgia Tech plus 10 in the turnover department. They have prospered in that department. 16 interceptions as a team. Here's Chubb. Cuts it to the outside. Chubb falls forward close to another first down and may be good enough inside the 10. Well, what a block by Jeb Blazevich, the tight end coming around and then Chubb showing the patience. He's a true freshman. Waited the block out of Jeb Blazevich and then it was just downhill and around the corner for to pick up the first down.
Mason across the middle. Pass is caught down to the one-yard line. That'll be a pickup of three for the Bulldogs as Mitchell made the reception. And now it looks as though Mark Rick says, stay on the field. We're going for it. Yeah, you got to back like Chubb in the backfield. Why not? Hand off to Chubb. Left side. Touchdown, Georgia. Tempo, tempo, and more tempo from the Georgia Bulldogs. And even on a fourth down and goal, they go tempo. Quick snap, Georgia Tech out of position, and it's easy pickings for Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb with six carries on that drive, 36 yards and a touchdown. Boy, the Bulldogs with an explosive opening drive. 75 yards capped off by the 12th rushing touchdown of the season by the true freshman Nick Chubb. A view from Ugga's house here between the hedges in Sanford Stadium. Marshall Morgan kicks it off. Jamal Golden about three yards deep will take a knee. So now the Georgia Tech offense, which is leading the ACC and is 13th in the country at almost 38 points per game. Led by Justin Thomas, the sophomore out of Prattville, Alabama, who has just grown into this position and has become a world beater of late. He is, he is the thing that makes it go. And he is electric. 100-meter state champion in the state of Alabama. About 10-7 speed coming out of high school. If he breaks, look out. 827 yards rushing. He is completing passes over 50%. But... First down and 10, Georgia Tech. They will throw near side. Pass is caught by Smelter. He's out to midfield. And this is the dimension that when you face the Yellow Jackets this year, you have to account for. You've got a guy in Justin Thomas who can throw the football 52% on the year. And right there, he gets it out quick. And there's the playmaker, one of our impact players. And DeAndre Smelter, who can really do something with the football after the catch. Inside handoff will pick up uh, three on the play. Sinjin Days on the carry. He stepped in for Zach Lasky at that B back, kind of slash fullback position. And he's a ACC back of the week earlier this year. As I mentioned, put together three consecutive 100-yard performances, and that's what really makes this offense go. When you, you have the fullback or their B-back making plays in the middle, it is tough to contain this offense. Thomas looking to throw again. Big collision down to 33. Incomplete. Bobbled. Dennis Andrews couldn't get his hands on it. Big hit came from Quincy Mauger. If Andrews is able to hold on, it could be a big play, but big Quincy Mauger on the back end. This is sophomore. Had a solid game last week against Charleston Southern. We had Andrews looking for the contact, and Quincy Mauger's going to oblige and give it to him. He's looking. I'm going to give it to you. That's about as clean a tackle as you want in the game of football right now. Well, Georgia Tech on third downs has been outstanding. Nobody's been better. Over 58%. Thomas will throw incomplete. Had a man wide open and just couldn't connect. And it'll be a punting situation for Georgia Tech. Yeah, just kind of skipped one in there. If he actually could have set his feet, he'd have thrown an accurate pass to Tony Zinnon, one of their backs. And right there, if he's just able to get a little bit more on the football, and he knows it, had him wide open, would have been enough for the first down, and this drive would have continued. Zen and another guy, eight catches, averaging 20 yards per reception. Rodwell to punt it away. Back deep, Reggie Davis. He'll let it hit at the five, and it'll trickle in to the end zone. That is just the second touchback all year for Rodwell. 
game. You take a look at the series history now. Some say it's 107th meeting, some say it's 109th meeting. There were a couple of games played back during World War II where Georgia Tech used some players that weren't really students, and so Georgia doesn't really account for those games. Georgia Tech still does, but certainly uh, there is a, a history here that goes all the way back to 1893. The second time Hudson Mason has started in one of these games. Yeah, down 20 to nothing last year and led that come from behind win with it, it being his first start. Boy, McKenzie wrapped up by Isaiah Johnson. Play went for a loss of two. Good defense by number one. Yeah, he missed most or all of last season with an ankle injury. He's the team with five pass breakups, a three-year starter. And watch him here in the open field. This is what he means to this Georgia Tech defense. Tons of experience on the back end at strong safety. 262 career tackles for Johnson at a Tyrone, Georgia. Nick Chubb goes one way. Georgia will go the other. Caught over the 31. Malcolm Mitchell driving it all the way out close to the 35. Let's see where they spot it. That should be good enough for a first down. Big Brandon Kublano pushing the pile behind Malcolm Mitchell. And as well, Ted Roof talked about handling the wrinkles. We've already seen Chubb is in at the Wildcat quarterback position. And then he talked about sweeps, which they handle with McKenzie, but the screens have given them trouble here early. Here's Chubb, big hole off the left side. He gets past Johnson. Chubb to the 30. Chubb knocked out of bounds at the two-yard line. Boy, so electric as Nick Chubb. You give him a crease, you forget about his speed to hit the home run. Brandon Poblano, the left guard, watch 54. Pull around, seal it up, and that springs Nick Chubb. It's a foot race that De Demon Smith able to track him down. Chubb gets to the goal line, denied by inches after the 65-yard run. He's already up over 100 for the day. His seventh consecutive 100-yard game since he took over the starting role at tailback. Yeah, what's amazing, he only carried it nine times last week against Charleston Southern. He went for 113 and two touchdowns. They'll go to Chubb again. Lost the football. Georgia Tech has it. Well, you talk about a big, big play in this football game for the Yellow Jackets. You don't usually see that from Nick Chubb. He rarely puts the ball on the ground, but trying to maybe go over the top, it was timed well, and it's Isaiah Johnson who forces the fumble of Nick Chubb. We just talked about Johnson and how much he means to this Georgia Tech defense. Well, they're forcing the fumble. You'll see him come in right there, put his shoulder pad on the football, and it comes out. You know, Andre, I, I just wonder about Nick Chubb. and uh, He just had a 65-yard run. They gave it to him on the very next play. A little tired, maybe? Well, yeah. Great play by Tech. Once again, they are first in the ACC in turnover margin, ninth in the country. Now let's see what they can do with it here. Thomas trying to throw out of the end zone. It batted in the air and almost picked off by the dogs. A dangerous play, yeah. and Thomas was introduced to the hedges in the end zone. Maybe showing some in inexperience there. If you're going to throw it away, you throw the football out of bounds. Well, they got Toby Johnson for a roughing the passer penalty. And this is going to give Paul Johnson and this offense some room in which to work. See Thomas working out. The ball is gone. And here comes the big fellow with a little shove. Ah, I don't know about that one, Dave. Oh, boy. I know you're not supposed to put your hands on a quarterback after he's gone, but that's iffy. Well, that certainly gives Georgia Tech a big break out near the 20. There will go with Zach Latsky. He'll get a yard on the play. Mike Thornton, Leonard Floyd combined for the stop. Yeah, Lasky's back from an injury, and he's playing well. Fifth in the ACC in rushing. 15 minutes are in the books. Georgia took their opening drive, and this rivalry went 75 yards. 
Nick Chubb with the touchdown run, and that is where we stand back in a moment. Top 20 matchup between Georgia Tech and Georgia Bulldogs up by a touchdown as we begin the second quarter. Second down for Georgia Tech. Little end around to Smelter. He gets a block. He turns the corner and it's hit at the 23-yard line. Falls forward to the 26. Jordan Jenkins led the way. A nice block by Michael Summers to help out without getting called for a hold or a block in the back. Kind of repositioned himself to pick up the block for Smelter. Georgia Tech one of three on third downs. Looking at a third and two here. Zinn goes in motion, stops, but they'll hand it to the up back. Looks like they'll have the first down. It'll be close. Zach Lasky hit by Toby Johnson. When this offense, when you're able to get the fullback going, Sinjin Days and Lasky, as I mentioned, that's when they become dangerous because they just kind of soften you up in the middle and then they condense you down inside to try to take that away. And that's when all of a sudden the A-backs, those pitchmen and the quarterback, start making their marks. Swan back on the field for Georgia. Thomas going that way, spins out of trouble. Throws, caught by Smelter around the 40-yard line. Well, this is where Georgia Tech, is particularly this season, with that young man, Justin Thomas, DeAndre Smelter, you got Darren Waller as well on the other side. This is the element that you don't really account for. You have an account, had to account for defensively in previous years. This is a kid that used to play in a spread offense in high school and threw it around a bunch. Well, I like the way Smelter came back to help his quarterback out. Picks up a dozen yards and a first down. They'll go with Sinjin Days. He'll pick up a couple of yards hit by Leonard Floyd along with Amarlo Herrera. Clock at 224 and moving. Tell you what, Toby Johnson was there early again as well. All six foot four, 200, 300 pounds of him. Big fella, number 88. Stretching out those two eights. One of 27 seniors honored today before the game for the Bulldogs. There's the pitch to the 45 yard line, close to the first down. Perkins will pick up seven and a half, maybe eight. Well, watch the work of Dennis Andrews. You better have some pretty good edge blockers and some unselfish players. Watch number three. That right there, just working against Swan. That allows. The back with the football to turn up the field, Perkins. If you don't have that block, he has stopped way short of the first down. With it, it gives him a first down. See the first down story. 10 for Tech, 11 for the Bulldogs. Thomas back to pass. Pressure comes. Gets the pass away, and it's caught at the 41-yard line on that far side by Deion Hill. So it'll be second down at about six for Georgia Tech. 1.39 on the clock. Jackets have two timeouts left. Total offense, Georgia 2.29 here in the first half. Georgia Tech at 1.42. Thomas steps up. Incomplete. Trying to find Perkins through all the traffic and Tell you what, showing you the athletic ability. Watch the pressure that he's able to avoid. He gets it right away from the outside by Floyd. Steps up, and then he's just trying to be an athlete to get the ball to Perkins and unable to do so. But still, just avoiding a sack or pressure. It's a nice job by Thomas. They'll go with Days on third down, and he'll be a couple of yards shot. Georgia Tech, well, by the way, has not been shut out in a first half of a game since 2008 against North Carolina. Still a lot of time to play, and you, when you run a play like that on third down to your fullback, the message is, we're going for it on fourth down. And here they come, right to the line of scrimmage. You go with a dive play or take it outside? Well, you gotta go right back to Sinjin Days. They'll pitch it. Perkins has it. Georgia 
Tech will move the chains and stop the clock with 102. Well, that's the beauty of this offense, Dave. You can give it to Days if it's there. If it's not, he's, he, he feels the defense press down inside to take away the fullback. You pull it. Now you've got the option. Swan takes the quarterback. Easy pitch to Perkins for the first down. Thomas comes near side. Bad throw behind Darren Waller. Boy, and this is where if you're going to throw the football, it just hurts you not having Smelter on the field. He's hurt with a bad knee. It really right now. does because he's 6'3, about 222, big framed receiver. And you hear me talk a lot about this where you don't have to put it on between the one and the five with a guy like that. You throw in his vicinity, in his range, and he can catch the ball away from his body. <laughs> Those numbers pretty much tell you the story. Four man look from Georgia. Now it's a five man front. Thomas, big drop. He'll just throw it away and stop the clock and then live another day. Nobody really open. Basically a three man route. DJ Bostic, he was eaten up in the middle of the field. Waller on one side. I think it was Michael Summers as well in there. Thomas now four out of 12, throwing the football 48 yards. Big down here where you need something. You need about half of it to give yourself a chance to convert on fourth down. Georgia Tech's had a field goal block, but Georgia has fumbled it twice at the one yard line. Thomas again. Pass caught. Right at the first down marker. He might do it. That was Deion Hill again. And remember Paul Johnson, we talked to him earlier this week, and he said, look, people think just because of what we do offensively, third and long, we're in trouble. Well, Justin Thomas gives us a chance. And this is certainly qualifies third and long, third and ten. And there he is completing one to, to Deion Hill. It's right about the first down marker. It's close, about half yard shot. And you run this type of offense with days at fullback, give yourself a chance. Sinjin Days off the right side, the first down, and then gets out of bounds at the 12. A gain of 13 for Sinjin. And 27 seconds on the clock. You go behind the best player up front in Shaq Mason. Watch 70 work. Watch number 70. Just blowing everything down inside. And then that clears it out for Sinjin Days. Boy, they talk, they think a lot of, lot of Shaquille Mason, named after Shaquille O'Neal. But he is a solid football player for Georgia Tech, number 70. Now they come near side with the option. Missed tackle allows Thomas to get close to the six yard line. And they'll pull big Shaq Mason and I don't know that I've seen a lot of teams or a lot of players blow up Jordan Jenkins and he just did it in space Leonard Floyd misses the tackle but watch number 70 work against Jenkins that's a blow up I mean just gets him right off pace he goes on the ground did his job and now the rest is left up to Justin Thomas to figure it out 13 seconds to go. Georgia Tech uses a timeout. One remaining for the Jackets. So everything's on the table here from quarterback draws or a quarterback run to anything. 13 plays on this drive. Thomas will throw it, lob it up in the air. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. They go to Darren Waller, all six foot five. Hauls in the pass. And that's what having a guy six five down in the red zone will present to you as an offense. Just a lob shot, go up, and Swan can't even make a play on it because of the body position of Waller. Look at this. It's like boxing out for a rebound. Didn't even have a chance to make a play on it. Well-thrown ball by Justin Thomas. Here's the point after. It is up and good. What a drive by Georgia Tech. Never panicked, never got flustered, converted a couple of fourth downs, 14 plays, 80 yards, 
just shy of three minutes off the clock. Waller with his fourth touchdown reception of the season. We are tied at seven after 30 minutes of play in the 107th edition of clean old-fashioned hate between the hedges in Athens, GA. Let's get it downstairs and join Laura. Coach, some big plays offensively, but two costly turnovers in the end zone. How do you hope your backs bounce back from those? Yeah, they'll be fine. Typically, they have good ball security, but came out twice at the worst time. But uh, they're very good backs, and uh, they'll get back to the fundamentals. You held Georgia Tech's high-scoring offense to just seven points. Any adjustments you need to see on the defensive side of the ball? No, I think we're playing well. You know, it's, it would have been nice to keep them out of the end zone at the end there, but they did a nice job. Thanks, Coach. Mark Rick feels perhaps that his team left some points out on the football field with those turnovers. We are tied at seven here in Athens. Time for us to go to the studios. Peter Burns, Tony Barnhart with our SEC halftime report. Guys, so, an absolutely gorgeous day here at Sanford Stadium in Athens. Clean old fashioned hate. Tied at seven after 30 minutes of football. Dave Neal back alongside my partner Andre Ware. And Andre certainly an even first half on the scoreboard. Looked like Georgia let some opportunities get away. Well, they did. A two scoring opportunities. Nick Chubb going into the end zone. He puts it on the ground. Sony Michelle as well going in. But they got off to a heck of a start. Nick Chubb with an easy touchdown run to start the football game. Then it was a long run as well that got him down there. And you see here, it's just a foot race to the end zone. He comes up a little bit short. And then a couple of plays later, Nick Chubb trying to go over the top. Isaiah Johnson forces the fumble. Georgia Tech dodges one there. Then Sony Michelle on his way to a touchdown run. It comes out. Isaiah Johnson recovers the fumble. Then, as, then you look at uh, Justin Thomas over the top to his receiver, Darren Waller. And that tied the game up at, at the half. Great drive by Georgia Tech there at the end of the half to get it in the end zone. You see the statistical story pretty even, although Georgia, they had that opening drive was very impressive. And Georgia put together 228 total yards, but it's those two turnovers, Dre, that you just circled that are the difference in this game at this point. Yeah, going in, I mean, you're talking about not just in the field of play, but inside the five yard line where they are clearly scoring opportunities. True, two true freshmen, but you know, they're, to their credit, Dave, they are not known to put the ball on the ground very much. Yeah, that's what Coach Rick was saying to Laura on the way in to the locker room at halftime is that he wasn't overly worried about their psyche as those two guys have been great all season in terms of holding on to the football. No Todd Gurley, so 1-27 and 27 trying to get it done for Georgia today. Georgia Tech will have the football to start the second half after that fantastic 80-yard drive, 14 plays to end the first half. Jamal Golden at about the seven yard line. Jamal. And a flag comes out back at the 15 yard line. Let's go get an update with Laura down on the sidelines. Well, Dave, I just spoke with Georgia Tech head coach Paul Johnson, who told me that wide receiver DeAndre Smelter will not come back in this game. He's dealing with a left knee injury. They decided to hold him out. Johnson saying they're going to have to figure out how to get it done without Smelter. He also told me on the positive side of things, they're very happy about the fumbles that they forced for Georgia. Yeah, and it was actually at the tail end, like a second tackle that his toe got caught, and then that. Then the knee injury came after that. Big run up the middle for Sinjin Days. That'll be a gain of a 12 and a first down. But what's yeah. the tail end of this play? One more time. Injury. He's actually tackled by Aaron Davis. He gets up and then Davis tackles him again. You could see the left toe kind of get caught in the turf and the knee twist inward. And that's where the injury occurred. It's the second tackle on a Kind of after the whistle had been blown that, that caused the injury to De DeAndre Smelter. And remember the ACC championship game next week. Second down and 13. Thomas, the pitch. Gets a good block on the outside. Broken tackle. And a nice run of 12 yards as that goes to Deion Hill. Well, and a nice job as well. Justin Thomas working this offense to perfection, showing it. They go down on the fullback. He pulls it out. They take the quarterback, forcing the pitch to Deion Hill. And that's how you operate this triple option attack of Georgia Tech. 
Boy, Days cuts it outside and picks up the first down over the 40-yard line and 11 yards. Wilson with the tackle, but the first time we've seen him cut one to the outside. That big fella showing some give it and take it away. Inside, puts that leg in the ground, and then right there is what I like. Getting right back vertical to pick up positive yards, not allowing the defense, Wilson or Herrera, to force you outside wide. Get right back up the field. And they'll hand it to Lasky, and he drives his way to the 43-yard line. Six-yard pickup. Now you're looking at second down at about four. Yeah, and it's kind of a change of pace when La when they go from Days to Lasky. Days is more of a thumper. Lasky comes in at that B-back position, and he hits it just a little bit quicker. So if there's a smidget of daylight, it looks as though he's going to break, you know, each and every one of them because he's no nonsense. I mean, no nonsense. He's right downhill and hits the hole with a lot more quickness than Sinjin Days. Four-man look from Georgia Tech, or from Georgia. Another handoff up the middle, Zach Lasky. He's down to the 20-yard line, still on his feet. There's the example right there. I mean, he just defined it. There's a, there's a hole between Freddie Burton and Shaquille Mason right there. And just the quickness and speed in which he hits it. And it's only there briefly. But boy, the quickness in which he hits the hole allows him positive yards just about every time he touches the football. That's a heck of a run. Sideline warning. First one for Georgia Tech. Paul yeah, a little excited after that yeah. run by Lasky. There are the numbers. It is a committee that does it. Matter of fact, we asked Paul Johnson this week. I said, how do you determine who carries the ball? He says, usually I just look around and whoever's standing next to me, I send him in with the play. Yeah, run it behind Mason. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Here's Days to the five, down to the four-yard line. Dave, you remember earlier in the first half, I told you, if the fullback in this offense starts to have success, it could be a long afternoon for defenses. Well, that's happening. Days got it started on this drive. Lasky gave him a breather. They come back with a more physical back in days, and now they're playing downhill against a defense that looks like it's getting a little bit tired. Tenth play of the drive. They've all been on the ground. Days down to the two-yard line. Stopped there. And that also gives you the edges when you pull it and Deion Hill, Perkins. Zinnin, all those A-backs in this offense. Wouldn't surprise me if they show it to Days here and Thomas walks into the end zone because of the, the, the concentration that now Georgia has to have on the fullback Days. See that, Georgia Tech has scored a touchdown on eight of 11 second half opening drives, trying to make it nine out of 12. Third and goal. Man, you talk about condensed. All 11 are right there. Thomas keeps it. And he is stopped shy of the goal line. Georgia says they have it. No whistle. Damian Swan. There he goes. What a turn of events. I thought Thomas was close to being in the end zone. One of our impact players and Damian Swan goes the other way. Johnson runs out on the field to call a timeout. Yeah, he wants him to take a look at this to see if J Justin Thomas actually got into the end zone. And I tell you what, it is a good risk reward timeout. Oh, absolutely. A heads up timeout. He just can't tell. There's so many bodies in there. Maybe this gives you a different look, but he just disappears, and it's not, the whistle's not blown, and all of a sudden, Swan comes in, he's fighting, he gets the ball out, and he's off and running. I think this one's going to stand. 
I have seen some crazy things. How about the Jasper Sinks fumble years ago at the goal line in Atlanta? Hey, you see Swan right there come in. He is finally gets the ball out. This is going to be a Georgia touchdown. The field stands. Yeah. There's not enough video evidence to confirm it. But enough to where that play's going to stand. You lose Thomas, and the ball oh. comes out. What a drive by Georgia Tech to come up this way. Both teams have now fumbled a combined three times inside the one yard yeah. line. The point after is up and good. Damian Swan, a 99 yard scoop and score. The senior out of Atlanta, Georgia, knows all about this rivalry. Coming up with the play of the day to this point, as there is a lot of football left. 99 yards, 14 7 dogs. How about this drive, though? I mean, Amazing. this is 12 plays, 91 yards, 6 minutes and 18 seconds, and it ends in a fumble return for a touchdown. And the majority of it done on the ground, and then to have it in that way, boy, that could be just demoralizing going forward for Georgia Tech. How do you respond? Golden bringing it out. He has dropped at the 10-yard line after a 12-yard return by Tim Kimbrough. Inside handoff, Zach Lasky still driving down to the 45 of Georgia. Nice run of 19 yards. Boy, I like this senior from Peachtree City, Georgia. Stars Mill High School, Zach Lasky hits it like it's supposed to be hit. Watch him in the middle of this. Quickness right there. Nice block by Trey Braun, the left guard. That frees him up. But boy, does he hit it with some explosion and speed. Nine carries, 66 yards for Zach Lasky. First down and 10. This time, Georgia handles the dive play. Only a yard. Let's go down to Laura. Well, Dave, you were wondering about Justin Thomas's psyche after the goal line fumble. He was pacing the sideline by himself, shaking his head for a while. And then he went over to his receivers who were telling him to keep his head up. But he said, guys, it's all on me. And we know how much this means to both of these teams. It'll be interesting to see how he responds, Dave. It'll be interesting because, uh, you know, I, I don't think it'll shake him too bad because this offense is having success. Right. Toss sweep. That'll pick up three and a half yards as Perkins dives inside the 40. Oh, he could have kept his feet. Brian Chamberlain, the left tackle, in his second year as a full-time starter in this offense, had thrown him a nice block in space, and he keeps his footing. He would have at least, at the very least, picked up the first down. So now it's third down, and five today on third down. Georgia Tech five out of 12. They're the best in the country coming into this game on converting these situations. There's the pitch. Deion Hill trying to get the corner, and he Got does. It. First down, Georgia Tech. Well, and he has come up with some big, big plays on third downs for this Tech offense. Nice job. They close down on the fullback. Lasky, take the pitch, take the quarterback away, and now it forces you to pitch it to Hill, and he responds with a first down for the Tech offense. First down and 10. Thomas with the pitch to Hill. Inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line, and Thomas took a major hit but got the pitch away, 17 play. yards. What a play. This oh. is the type of offense that forces you to work your responsibilities. Anybody out of position, and you see right there, Swan takes one step out of position. The athletic ability of Thomas allows him to get it to heel and picks up another first down. That's taking one for the team right there. You have there, pitch boy. man responsibilities. You've got to stay out there if you're Damian Swan. First down and 10. Inside the 10, down to the 9. 
A little misdirection. Goes Deion Hill, he picks up six. Now they go misdirection and come back the other way. Watch him. Nice block by Perkins, the back. Another unselfish play. We saw De Dennis Andrews throw a block on the outside earlier. And that's what I'm talking about. These A backs for Georgia Tech have to be unselfish. When you don't have the football in your hands, you're asked to do some things and make plays in terms of blocking for the other guys. Lasky, first down. It'll be first and goal, Georgia Tech from the four. Rameek Wilson in on the tackle. Now, here's where you coach him up if you're Paul Johnson. Ball security. It's on everybody's mind right now. You have taken the ball and driven it down the field. We did it the you know two a, a drive or so ago. Now ball security. Hold on to the football. Two nineteen to go. Third quarter. Lasky left side touchdown. Georgia Tech. Lasky's sixth touchdown run of the season. That is a big boy drive right there by the Yellow Jackets. I just think with this pace, they get in the huddle, they call a play, they come right to the line of scrimmage, quick snap. The tempo has increased. I think Georgia defensively maybe getting a little winded trying to defend this offense that just keeps coming right at them. Point after is up and good, and we are tied. Another outstanding drive for Georgia Tech. This one, however, does get into the end zone. 352 off the clock. Eight plays, 63 yards. Georgia Tech in the third quarter has run 23 plays for 158 yards. Georgia has run four plays for four yards. Touchback after the 25, we will go. I think a little responsibility on the shoulders of Hudson Mason, Nick Chubb, and Sony Michelle to get this thing going. And there's a guy that's been a little bit quiet today, and number 31, Chris Conley. Don't be surprised if he doesn't get himself involved in this thing offensively. Spread him out, throw it a little bit, throw it around a little bit, and he is outstanding in space with the ball in his hands. Hudson Mason, 8 out of 10 today for 88 yards. I don't know that Connolly's been targeted today. He has not. From the 25 on first down and 10. A little heat coming from Georgia Tech. Dump it over the middle to Nick Chubb. He'll have 10 and a half yards. First down, Georgia. Or Neely in on the tackle. Yeah, Mason just had such a good feel for the game. He wanted to go outside to... Malcolm Mitchell on a hitch. It was covered up, and instead of coming back, he knew I'd stayed there. He stayed there a little bit too long. Let me just go ahead and check this down to Chubb, where I don't have to come backside and risk getting sacked. Pass caught, and then it will go as a reception. Jonathan Rowe. First down, Georgia at the 48 of Georgia Tech. Boy, this is a pair, 16. pair of strong hands right here. You got a defensive back draped on you. I think he actually gets a hand on the football, and he, he thought he had it out. D.J. White thought he actually had the ball out. Rump just holding on. And that inside slant and picks up a first down to bail out this Georgia offense. 1-10 to go here in the third quarter. Nick Chubb trying to work that right side. Gets about a yard of the play. First man there, Anthony Harrell. Harrell's made a couple of good plays in this ball game. All over the field. Pretty much keeping Nick Chubb in check the second half of this one. Over the middle. Pass is caught. 
Malcolm Mitchell to the 28-yard line. That's a 17-yard gain, and that is a nice catch. And a nice throw. What's the anticipation of this throw? He lets it go between two defenders, a safety and a linebacker. That is well thrown with tremendous accuracy from Hudson Mason. Malcolm Mitchell came in averaging just eight yards a catch on 21 grabs. Now has five for 46 today. And that will do it for the third quarter here in Athens. A quarter that was just dominated by Georgia Tech's offense. The only problem is, is they had a touchdown snatched right out of the hands of their quarterback. Damian Swan goes 99 the other way. But a blocked field goal gave some momentum back to the Jackets, and they would eventually put it in the end zone. We're all tied. We are tied at 14 here in Athens, Georgia. A crazy third quarter where Georgia Tech had the football for 11-20 of that frame. Remember that 14-minute drive I told you about? I got to go downstairs, check with Laura. Well, Dave, Jeremy Pruitt, the defensive coordinator for Georgia, talking to each one of his seniors on defense, saying this is the fourth quarter. This is why you've worked so hard for four years. Don't let me down. He said, keep your eyes in the right spots and keep your hands in the right spots. We've got this. Dave? You know, Georgia certainly, Laura, disappointed the way that Missouri ended up winning yesterday. Wildcat formation finished that story in just a second as Nick Chubb trying to get the edge and he's got nowhere to run. He's knocked out of bounds. But don't tell me that uh, this game doesn't mean something to the Bulldogs. Here's David Andrews, Georgia's center and the leader of this team. Yeah, he, he's giving it to everybody. Defensive players, offensive guys. He is, This shows you that there's still a lot on the line for David Andrews. A lot of football left to be played in today's ball game. Second down from the 30. He'll swing it to Chubb. Makes a man miss, but then wrapped up as Georgia Tech starting to fly around the football. Jermaine McNair with a nice open field tackle. And there's David Andrews, 39 consecutive starts at Georgia. That's the longest streak on the team. And mention the fact he followed a pretty good one in Ben Jones, who was a four-year starter up front. Now the starting left guard for the Houston Texans. Mason in trouble dropped at the 31 yard line. Tremaine McNair with a sack a loss of two. He had early pressure. And it comes right up the A-gap. Adam Godis goes right there. He forces him into the arms of McNair. But the, the instant pressure right in his face forces him to step up into the pocket. And then McNair finishes it off. Now a 48-yard field goal attempt from Marshall Morgan. Had it blocked from 49 earlier. They'll try the fake. Plenty of room to run. Morgan turns the corner. He's to the 10. The four-yard line. Reggie Davis throws the block on Jamal Golden that sets free the kicker, Marshall Morgan. What a flip as well by the holder, Adam Erickson. And it, it catches Morgan right in stride. Watch this. Right out in front. And then a nice block by Jay Rome, the tight end who... Is the guy actually not Davis, but Jay Rome frees up Marshall Morgan for the first down. Watch 87. This is the block that allows Marshall Morgan to pick up the first down. 28 yard gain. Call sweep Chubb trying to get the corner. Can't do it. DJ White pushes him out of bounds. A loss of a yard. Well, he is not a big guy. 5'8, 188 pounds. 5'11. 188 pounds, but he shows up. Excellent tackler in the open field because he's been one on one with Nick Chubb on a couple of occasions, and each one he has responded. Stingy defensively down here. Chubb stuffed again. 
Guess who comes from under the bottom of the pile. DJ White working in there. Dominique Noble in there as well. Anthony Harrell. Yep. Out of Tampa getting his nose in there. It is a team effort. And that is what Ted Roof says. The strength of this defense is the strength of the team. Third and goal. Lofting it up, looking for Bennett incomplete. No flags. Hey, Bennett just lost his footing and really couldn't time his jump as he's trying to jump to make an effort to catch this ball. He just loses his footing. Watch him right here, just trying to time it. Gets his feet tangled up and, and goes down. And Lynn Griffin right there in coverage, making it a tough throw for Hudson Mason. And once again, bend but don't break defensively for Georgia Tech. A 19-yard try. Marshall Morgan with clean snap. Hold is good. And he will split the uprights. So Georgia picks up the three. The drive kept alive. 28-yard fake. And Marshall Morgan picks up the first down. But Georgia Tech's defense stands tall inside the five. Three-point game in Athens. By the way, Andre, that fake field goal a moment ago yeah. by Marshall Morgan was the first executed fake field goal for Georgia since November of 98 against Auburn. That's how long it had been. Well, you can do that when you have an athlete that's a kicker. <laughs> Marshall Morgan certainly qualifies because he took it, didn't take a misstep, and was around the end with that block from Jay Rome on his way to a first down. Morgan will kick it off. Jamal Golden. Georgia Tech will have it out at the 20 yard line. Georgia Tech at the 20 yard line, looking first and 10. Sinjin Days, the fullback, fake it to him, and Thomas will keep it out to the 25 yard line. I tell you, Thomas is so good in this offense. I thought Days had the football and lost it in there for a second, and so did Georgia. And then all of a sudden, they see Thomas still running on his way to about five yards. Georgia Tech today on the ground has rushed for 281 yards. They've outgained Georgia overall, 345 to 303. Days breaks one tackle, picks up the first down to the 32-yard line. Amarlo Herrera now with 14 tackles in this game. A seven-yard gain, though, as Days will limp off the field. And they've got a pretty good replacement coming in, and Zach Lasky, the, the other fullback, it's having a nice afternoon as well. Already a touchdown run for Lasky. Only two passes this half for Georgia Tech. It has been the ground and pound. It's actually, Matt Connors coming in. Connors had that kick return a moment ago. But they'll go the other way with Dennis Andrews. And Andrews out to the 39 yard line. That's seven yards. Wilson makes the tackle he now has 13 stops today you, know, you just really can't say enough about the performance of guys in space without the ball in their hands you, know, you got edge blockers and Andrews and Zinnan and all these guys Perkins throwing blocks that's opening it up for the ball carriers to actually gain yards Lasky will be right at the first down line. Well, I think he's going to have enough for a first down here. It's the unselfish play in space by the receivers and these A backs that don't have the ball uh, allowing for some some chunk plays by Georgia Tech. Lasky's had a big time performance here in the second half. Seven carries, 64 yards. First down and 10. Lasky to the 45-yard line. Stop there. Ramik Wilson with another tackle. 
Boy, and you just wonder how much this game, this offense is wearing down this Georgia defense right now. I mean, coming right at them. And we talked about the tempo change. Even though they're huddling, it's not kind of your traditional tempo. But they get in the huddle, they call it, they come right to the line of scrimmage, and you're left to really sort out where they are. By the time you do, they've already snapped the ball and they're coming at you. Thomas, there's the pitch. Deion Hill, he's to the 40 yard line. Wilson chases him down, but that's 15 more yards for the Jackets. Keep an eye on number three. Watch the play of Dennis Andrews. Right about here, freeze it. With that block right in there with three is the block that really allows for Perkins to get the edge. Watch three, that one right there, that block, freeze it. That one right in the inside is the block that allows Perkins to get outside and pick up the first down. Can't say enough about the unselfish play of guys without the football in their hands. Zach Lasky picks up seven more. Wilson now with 15 tackles on the day. And we, we talked about that 14-minute drive that Paul Johnson had when he was coaching at Navy. I was a part of that game. They can chew it up. They've already had a drive earlier in this game that went for over 11 minutes. And they could basically chew up this seven and a half minutes left and leave Georgia with very little time. But it's essential that they get some points themselves after doing so this will be a fantastic finish second down Another dive play to Lasky this time he is stuffed Wilson leading the charge for the dogs gain of only a one Ray Drew also in on the action Days has not been back in after he limped off and he's turned it over to Connors and Lasky Power back of the, the three of them, Sinjin Days. You think you're in uh, four down territory no, here? I, I think definitely you're in four down territory. There is Sinjin Days. He's a spectator at the moment. Lasky bobbled the football and still has the wits about him to pick up the first down. Just has a knack for finding space along that offensive line. It was designed to go inside. Watch him after the bobble. He knows it's no longer there, but he gets just a jump step to get right back outside and then vertical to pick up the first down. Oh, man. I like this kid, Zach Lasky. First down and 10. Tenth play of the drive coming up. Dennis Andrews near the first down marker. Inside the 20, he's down to the... 18 yard line. That'll be a gain of nine. It is real close to that first down line. And once again, Perkins and Darren Waller on the outside, guys without the ball in their hands, doing work to allow Andrews to turn the corner and pick up about nine yards. Just love the unselfish play. That's that's playing as a team. Lasky on the dive inside the 15 first down after a gain of four. You know, we talked when we talked to Paul Johnson this week, told us, you know, I've had more talented teams, but this is the best team that I've had at Georgia Tech because everybody knows their responsibilities. They're willing to do the dirty work when, you, when they don't have the ball in their hands. And I think it's on display right before you. And this is. What we talked about earlier as well, the two guys in the middle of this offensive attack, Days and Lasky, those are the afternoons that they put together. When those two are going, it's a long day defensively for you. I mean, how frustrating must this be for the Georgia bench? Tall sweep coming near side. Deion Hill inside the 10. He's down to the seven yard line. He picks up another seven yards. Nice job by Shaq Mason. The right guard. Watch number 70. He's going to pull out and around right in here. Going to get a nice block right there on Tim Kimbrough, the linebacker, working from inside out. Wasn't a knockout block, but just enough to shield him. I 
allow his ball carrier to pick up about six yards. That's the best offensive lineman on the team right there. Number 70, big Shaq Mason. Lasky right side breaks a tackle touchdown Georgia Tech from eight yards away and the Jackets have the lead. Boy, a down block by the tackle 75 Aaron Joe they pull the guard Shaq Mason. It's so clean that he doesn't even have to block anybody for Zach Lasky. You talk about a lot of plays defensively for Georgia starting to wear down a little bit on that side of the football. Another time consuming drive for Georgia Tech. They just grind it down the field. Point after is good. 13 plays, 80 yards. 6.51 off the clock. Zach Lasky with two touchdowns today, seven on the season. Tech's playing well on both sides of the football. Short kick. Georgia Tech has it. They scoop it up, or did it hit out of bounds? They're going to say Georgia Tech will. Can't advance it. They're going to say he's, he's re recovered it right around the 26, 27 yard line. And Georgia just went to sleep special teams wise Lawrence Austin came up with the football for Georgia Tech I don't know why Quavon Hicks oh my didn't goodness feel this ball maybe he thought someone was coming from behind but he just leaves it and it's just sitting there oh my goodness both J Rome and Quavon Hicks did not feel the football it's right there Lawrence Austin, the defensive back, playing on special teams, comes up with a recovery. What a mental meltdown. And now Georgia Tech, with 422, will try to run this thing out. When you got a tired defense, guys are a little bit angry, getting a little chippy in there. I tell you what, the way they have operated offensively, this is a tough, tough sure for Georgia going forward but Austin still celebrating just a, a, a meltdown heck of a play to come up with the football but look at the second half play selection first of all 37 plays for Georgia Tech here in the second half well, Ray Rochelski that special teams coordinator with that dialing up that one Lasky He's inside the 20, close to the 15-yard line. Eight more yards. There he is again. I mean, he, when he hits it, and they're going right behind Shaq Mason. Can't say enough about the job that he's done. The three-year starter at right guard, an All-American candidate, first team All-ACC last year, and he has the respect of everybody they play against. We talked to the Georgia coaches, and Jeremy Pruitt, Pruitt singled out Shaq Mason and his job along the offensive line. Well, I mean, stating the obvious here, but Georgia's got to hold this Georgia Tech team to a field goal if they can't get the football back some other way. But it is timeout time for the Bulldogs. They're going to spin one here with 2.59 on the clock. Boy, look at the time of possession of Georgia Tech this season. I mean, spoke earlier. Today, it was actually a two minutes better today than it is for their average. 11 minutes of time of possession in the third quarter rather than an 11 minute drive. But seen them do it on a few occasions. This type of this offense of Paul Johnson's. Thomas. He's tripped up back at the 18 yard line. That'll be a loss of three and a half yards. And, that and another just, timeout taken by Georgia. It's just designed, Dave, to, to kind of extend a play where it's longer rather than a quick hitter inside and a stop. We're just trying to run some clock now by getting Justin Thomas outside along the edges. Excellent football coach right there, ladies and gentlemen. 431 on the ground, uh, total yards for Georgia Tech on the ground. They're up to 367. 
Third down. Thomas. Lost the football. Georgia has it. Amarlo Herrera. The one thing that you couldn't have happen with 2.41 on the clock and Georgia still left with a timeout. Ball security in these types of situations. And Justin Thomas on two occasions has put it on the ground. Right there. He is faking the pass and really no need to just throw it away. There is life in Sanford Stadium for the Bulldogs. He just drops. Oh, he's trying to fake the defender into the air. Marlo Herrera, who didn't go, who didn't fall for the fake, because there's no receiver in that area. But oh boy, Georgia Tech defensively going to be asked. They got a tall order here. Thomas can only watch now. Here's Georgia's offense. They have only run 19 plays in the second half. Georgia Tech over 40. Mason right through the hands. That was looking for Malcolm Mitchell. Remember last year Mason yeah. was the starter his first career start against Georgia Tech because Aaron Murray got hurt against Auburn towards ACL rallied Georgia from 20 down to pick up the win. In that game he completed 22 passes for 299 yards and, a, and two touchdowns. Mason steps up over the middle. Pass is caught. Chris Conley with a reception, a gain of 19. And Georgia in. Right at midfield. Yeah, been quiet all day. The playmakers, when you need them the most, they find a way to involve themselves in a game, and that's Chris Conley. Handed off to Sonny Michelle. Sony inside the 35 yard line or 45 yard line give him seven two oh seven two oh six to play in this one near side first down Georgia Malcolm Mitchell picks up seven DJ white there as well helping to Escort Mal Malcolm Mitchell down, but he was going for the strip, trying to draw the ball loose. It's a good young young uh, cornerback here in DJ White. Mason, nowhere to go. Dumps it off to Blazevich, and he is tossed to the turf by DJ White. Gain of five. I look close to whether Mason was across the line of scrimmage. Remember, Georgia with only one timeout left. Both teams with just a single timeout. 90 seconds to play. Sony Michelle has a hole. He's to the 21. Clock will stop it for a moment after a gain of 11. The clock will stop because of the first down. And keep in mind, they need a touchdown. They have to get into the end zone. With a minute 20 seconds left in this ball game, a field goal will do nothing for Georgia. Here comes some pressure. Mason to the end zone looking for Bennett. It's incomplete. And Georgia Tech playing some man to man and bringing pressure on Hudson Mason just about every down. And that's not kind of the M.O. of Ted Roof. He likes to play a lot of zone coverage, but here he is heating up the kitchen of Hudson Mason, forcing him to make quick decisions. Mason now 15 to 22, 165. Here it comes again. See the pressure coming from the top. Mason hit, pass is caught. Conley down to the five. It'll be first and goal, Georgia, under a minute to go. They still have the timeout, so there is no need to rush anything. Plenty of time for Georgia offensively. Justin Thomas cannot even watch. Pressure again. Mason will throw it away. Souvenir for the Jackets and their fans. 
Uh, she didn't want it. Stir it right back into, into the field of play. If there were a yellow jacket throwing it, she may have kept it, but here comes the pressure from the outside. And Mason standing right in there finding Chris Conway, who has really responded here in the fourth quarter. Thomas can't even watch. His two fumbles today. One resulted in a 99-yard touchdown for Georgia. We'll see how this one plays out. Tenth play of the drive. Mason over the middle. Is it intercepted? Caught it. Oh, my goodness. What a catch by Conley. Clock is ticking. There's really no need to rush. They have the timeout if they want it. No need to rush here. Third and goal from the five. They'll hand it off. Chubb is at the five. He's down to the three. Nice job again by Isaiah Johnson, the safety, coming up and tackling Nick Chubb. It'll be fourth down and goal. Yeah, this is where I think we may have to take the time out. Fourth down and ball game is what it is. That's just tough. Herrera had that fumble recovery a moment ago of the Thomas pump fake, but Herrera with 19 tackles today. This could essentially be 14 points lost on turnovers by Justin Thomas. And you ain't dependent on him, but loses the fumble going in to Damian Swan. Loses the fumble there on a pump fake. And he is just hoping that his defense can hold up right now. It is fourth down and goal. 22 seconds, no timeouts for Georgia. This is it right here. Touchdown, Georgia. What a series for the Dogs. Well, just the roll. They basically give Hudson Mason a sprint out option. Both guys, Bennett as well as Mitchell, go on out routes and Mitchell was the guy that came open cleanly. Malcolm Mitchell has been fighting through injuries. What a call by Mike Bobo as well in this drive to really march down the field, mixing the run and the pass. And there on a fourth down, he has a confidence in Hudson Mason to get it done, and he does to the junior wide receiver Malcolm Mitchell only 18 seconds to go Hudson Mason to Malcolm Mitchell short kick out to the 43 yard line taken by Anthony Harrell Watching SEC Network football presented by Allstate as Georgia Tech with 13 seconds to go. First down and 10, but a long way to go. Can they pick up enough to get in a field goal range? This takes one big play and to get out of bounds. Thomas, he's going to try to run, has the first down. Now we'll get out of bounds, and there are five seconds left. Make it four, 21-yard well, pickup on the play. Now you really have to emphasize to Justin Thomas that 
if it's going to be a one play deal I think Paul Johnson may be thinking about taking a field goal attempt right now. Yeah, don't mess around with it and trying to drop back and get a get a playoff real quick. It's actually four seconds left. They're going to try the field goal attempt right now. 53 yards. He has missed from 51 time this year. His long on the year is 46. The snap was perfect. The hold was perfect. And he nails it right down the gut to send it to overtime. Oh, my. Takes three components. The snap, the hold, and the kick. All three work in sync. It is right down the middle and long enough. Just enough. <laughs> that would have been good from 53 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and oh we're boy. about to see the first overtime game in the history of Sanford Stadium. Well, it's appropriate. They went to double overtime a year ago. Blasky. Dive play again that has been so hard for Georgia to stop today. Picks up seven. Carter with the tackle. Boy, he has been the one constant in Georgia Tech's offense throughout the afternoon. Sinjin Days started it, had a nice afternoon, but he gave way to Zach Lasky after he limped off, and they have not missed a beat. And that's with their playmaker on the outside as well, DeAndre Smelter, out of this ballgame. Lasky cuts it to the outside. He'll have the first down at the 11. Another gain of seven. I'll tell you what, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Keep giving it to him. They're running right behind Freddie Burton, the center, the red shirt sophomore, and then the, the senior and Shaq Mason, the right guard. And I keep talking about it because it's so good. <laughs> Watching those two operate up front, why go away from them? Two grown men on the offensive line for Georgia Tech. There's the pitch. Perkins, he's to the five and out of bounds. Dominic Sanders. When you get everybody crashing down inside. Watch everybody. Drew, Carter, they're all crashing inside. That's the tail sign for Justin Thomas to show it, pull it, and work the edges with Perkins, who's had a nice game of his own. Ball security. They can pick up a first down inside the two. Ball sits at the four. Handoff, Lasky. He is stuffed. Did he get enough forward progress for the first down? Ray Drew there, the first man on the spot. Let's see where the spot is. Sees Lasky put both hands on the football. Yes, you think I that did. was talked about a little bit by Paul Johnson? In the crowded area, put both hands on the ball. He did not pick up the first down, so it'll be third and short from just outside of the two. I think field goals out of the out of the equation right now for Paul Johnson. I think this is if he comes if he happens to come up short they would go for it again on fourth down with this running attack I certainly would Lasky driving to the end zone touchdown Georgia Tech his third today and the way he has stepped in for Sinjin days and performed. I think he's their MVP, no doubt about it. Right here, they get Floyd up into the air. You have to play leverage. You cannot give up space. You've got to get your pad level low. You go high, it makes it an easy block for Aaron Joe, the right tackle, and Shaq Mason, 
to get push. Blocked. Blocked. Ray Drew again. What a day for the senior out of Thomasville, Georgia. His second block kick of the day, and he has nine tackles as well. What a way to go out on in your last ball game as a senior, but Ray Drew gets pushed, and he gets it working against Shaq Mason to that side. That's just some want to. Yep, that's just determination, not quitting on any play whatsoever in a ball game. And that could, could end up being the deciding factor in the ball game for, for Georgia. Dogs have the football at the 25 yard line. First overtime. Here's Chubb. Hit right at the 20. Boy, good lick coming from Quayshawn Neely. A gain of five for Nick Chubb, who has been. Nick Chubb at 117 yards at halftime, Andre. He now has 128 for the day. Yeah, he's been quiet in the second half. A lot of it's been Sonny Michelle getting some time, but they have really focused in on Nick Chubb here in the second half. Chubb. Boy, stuffed. He might have even lost a yard. Yeah, nowhere to go with Keyshawn Freeman, the true freshman. He's their best pass rusher, but he has done an outstanding job in holding the point of attack. He's only 235 pounds or so playing that left end spot for Georgia Tech but boy is he a playmaker pass caught first down Georgia that one goes to Chris Conley a gain of 10 yeah Chris Milton just didn't react fast enough he's in position to make a play but then Conley comes open does not react up fast enough and that's the first down that Georgia needed to keep this game going. Nick Chubb stuffed again. Boy, Georgia just can't get the edge on these run plays. Boy, and I tell you what, Keyshawn Freeman was being blocked by Jeb Blazevich, the tight end on the outside. Kind of rotated around or gave him a spin move and then fell right back into the plate. Watch the edge. And you see Freeman out of position. He rotates around, kind of spins back inside, and is right there to bring down Nick Chubb. Second down and goal. for the Jackets. Boy, he baits Hudson Mason into this throw. Stared it down a little bit too long, Dave. Made it look like it was open. Baited him into the throw and then stepped right in front of it. To make everyone think Nick Chubb, he steps in there. Nice job as well by Tremaine McNair to really close down the throwing lane. Gives him a big body in front. And then there, beating him to the football and getting out in front is DJ White, who has had an outstanding football game for Georgia Tech. Let's go downstairs to Laura. Thanks, Dave. Coach, always a crazy game in this rivalry, but this one probably will make some special memories for you. How about DJ White's interception there? What a play. He's done that all year. Uh, I, you know, I couldn't be proud of our kids. They're so resilient. They just fight back and fight back. You mentioned that resiliency. Justin Thomas, a couple of tough moments today, and his defense was able to pick him up. Did you say anything to him? Did he say anything to you there in the uh, final you moment? You just got to forget it and move on. I mean, without the two... It's it doesn't have to be close. 
but uh, he's helped us win all year and he helped us there win score at the end so uh, I love Justin Thomas you haven't beat Georgia since 2008 how does this one feel oh, it feels great I'm actually two and two here in Athens <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're also two and one against Florida State. You head into the ACC championship game, turning your attention to the Seminoles. What kind of momentum will you bring into that game? You know, we're going to enjoy this thing tonight. We'll get started on Florida State tomorrow. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. He said it, two and two here in Athens. <laughs> With a jump. I'm proud to say it. <laughs> he could take a deep breath. They're heading home. Winners today. What a game in Athens. Justin Thomas and company survive a thriller. Now for Andre Ware, Laura Rutledge, the rest of our crew, I'm Dave Neal saying so long from Athens, Georgia. What a game. Just one more good old clean fashion hate.